Hey guys, what's up? Connor here. This is episode 11 or 12 of How to Code a Minecraft Client. Now, I already actually recorded this video. However, there was some trial and error, so I figured it would be better off just go ahead and do another video with all the code already figured out. So, basically, this is the, um, th these are the three classes that you're going to need to edit. Your main class, the GUI main menu class, and the GUI connecting class. The GUI connecting class can be found under the package net.minecraft.client.multiplayer. The GUI main menu class can be found under net.minecraft.client.gui. And the main class is obviously wherever you have it. So we're going to be creating um, a field here. And it's going to be called um, dprotocol. Now, mine is an integer. You can make it a double or a float. There's really no sense in doing that whatsoever, though. Just make an integer. Um, private int the protocol equals 4. That's the protocol version of the client. We are going to be using this a lot. Now, to get said integer, we are going to need a getter. So public int get protocol, and it will return the protocol. And one last method to set the protocol to whatever integer you want to set it to public void set protocol and then our parameter is the new protocol and it basically sets our protocol to this new protocol parameter. So now that we have that done we are going to go to GUI connecting dot java and basically all you have to do is go down to private void func func I don't know whatever um fourteen sixty three sixty seven underscore a um and right where it says COO handshake that's the handshake packet that handles any um version confirming slash um client confirming to make sure that it is a legitimate client so it's the fourth GUI connecting dot this thing right here if you don't count this um if statement so or the third I meant if, if I said fourth um I meant third anyway the first parameter it will say four right here what I have highlighted will be like this but you're gonna wanna change it to the getter for your protocol version that you just did in your main class and that's all we need in here and that's all we need in our main class now we're gonna go to GUI main menu dot java now when I started this tutorial I was did not know what I was doing so there was a lot of trial and error and I did mess with the dimensions of this button quite a bit but all you have to do is go to add single player multiplayer buttons and you're gonna find um, these two things menu.singleplayer menu dot multiplayer you're gonna do another one this dot button this dot add new GUI button the ID is going to be 100 the X is going to be the screen width divided by 2 minus 100 um, and then last but not least the um, or not last but the Y value is going to be par 1 plus par 2 times 1 plus 25 the display string is going to be basically if the protocol is 4 then it will be 1.7.2 to 1.7.5 because the protocol version 4 means that and protocol version 5 means 7.6 to 7.9 so um, that basically determines what version you're on using the protocol version that we did in our main class that's all we need there um, just add that button now down to action perform GUI button P underscore one four six two eight four underscore one underscore. We are going to add this at the very top. If P underscore one four six two eight four underscore one underscore dot ID equals equals one hundred, which is our button ID for the protocol version um button. Um then what we're gonna do is first off check to see if our protocol version is four. If our protocol version is 4, then we are going to set our protocol version to 5. So basically we're toggling in between 7.6 to 7.9 and 7.2 to 7.5. So that will update your protocol, but then that won't actually update the button text. So right here we have an, a method that I made that updates the button text. So it cycles through the button list, which is actually an object array list. It contains objects. So we have to confirm that the object that we're currently on is a GUI button, and then if it is, then we're going to create a new variable that casts GUI button to the current object. So that allows us to access various GUI button fields that would not be accessible in an object. Then we're going to check to see if this new variable 
if the display string starts with one, which is the only button in Minecraft that should start with one is our um, 1.7. whatever button. However, I'm going to actually add to it. I'm going to add 1.7 because there's no way that any other button will have that. And if it does, then you can add specifically what it will say depending on what version. Basically, you could say if it equals basically this. In fact, that's probably what I'll do just to ensure maximum accuracy. So we're going to say if display string equals equals new string um, so basically if it equals whatever this button should say then we are actually actually that won't work you know what just keep it at 1.7 that won't work it should be accurate if you happen to have any other buttons that are like that then you can probably experiment and figure out some other way to do it but we don't really need anything else then it'll set the display string to whatever string it should be. And down here, that's when we're going to call the update version after we set the protocol. So in review, when our 100 ID button is pressed, then it will set the protocol to 5 if it's 4, and then it'll update the version on the button. And if it's equal to 5, then it'll set it to 4 and then update the version on the button. So now let's start up our game. This episode will be much shorter than it would have been if I would have actually done all the trial and error. I tried to record it, but I was actually interrupted, so that was the main reason I didn't end up using it. So as you can see, we now have a new button here that says 1.7.2 to 1.7.5. We click it, and it changes to 1.7.6 to 1.7.9, and back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. So I'm going to change it to 7.2 and 7.5. As you can see, we have a 7.9 server here that I have and it won't let us use 7.9. So we switch it to 7.6 and 7.9. It will still give us this craft bucket 1.7.9. However, if we do join, we can log in and it works fine. So you can cancel out the craft bucket. You can go to where it actually determines what it should say right here and you can change it to make it look cleaner, but it works. So I'm just going to end the tutorial there. If you guys want to do that, then you can do it on your own time. So that was the tutorial, hopefully it helped, and we will see you guys later.